Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society. He has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now. Here are your hosts, Craig and Cam, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information. Hey, folks, and how we doing? Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. This is Craig. I am your host today, bartender, mixologist, and information. Um, well, we'll have to see a lot more information than just me. Uh, because Paula's here today. How are we doing, Paula? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Ah, yes. She's on her sugar high, so she's all good to go. <laughs> and she had a margarita today. How'd you like the margarita? I love it. There you go. See? I really, really do, actually. Sorry, Justin. I'm turning your girlfriend into an alcoholic. Uh, I do apologize in advance. Uh, just let you know. He thanks you, actually, because oh, he's trying he to make me drink. Because now he's like, cool, I get to drink now. No, the other day he asked me, can we please go to a steakhouse and order wine? And I'm like, why? I don't drink wine. He's like, well, you should, because it goes well with meat. And I'm like, honey, really? Like, most people would be happy to have someone that is a designated driver beside them. You want to make true. me drink. That's true. Because then if I was him, I'd be like, well, that's fine. Bring me the bottle. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, too, because we're talking about tiki bars today, nothing spices up a backyard like a tiki bar. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Instantly, it's like an instant oasis. Like when people come into my backyard and they see the tiki bar, they're instantly like, ah, uh, summertime. That's nice. And you get to know all the neighbors as well. We also have Mark. Hey, Mark, how we doing? We're doing great. Awesome. Mark had his like three naps today, so he's raring to go. What are we doing today? What are we talking about? What drink are we talking about? So the drink we're going to talk about today is a classic tiki cocktail. It's Pupula, also now known as... Nui Nui. Okay. Yeah. So I actually changed his name along the way. It's not the first one that we've got, but okay. Yeah, we've, we've had drinks in the past. Remember Dr. Funk? Yeah. They changed the name along the way. So yeah, yeah this does happen in uh, Tiki Generations. And and how did this one start? So Don the Beachcomber in the mid-1930s actually started this drink. And we'll actually go over the recipes for it later on down the line. So now Pupala in Hawaiian actually means crazy. Me. Yeah, so you've been named this before? Is that how it worked? Mm hmm Oh, okay. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> like, it's good to know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll be I'll be watching out when I go to Hawaii if someone's like, Pupula, Pupula. You're like, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I want to go to Hawaii. I can't wait to go to Hawaii. Me it's on my too. bucket list. Mine too. God. I actually did Mark, a little you list. in Hawaii? Uh, yes. Oh. Uh, oh, boo. boo. He's too fancy. <laughs> Anyways, us poor people. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how did this drink start? We we talked about it? Yeah, so we talked about Donna Beachcomber in the 1930s. And actually, the Nui Nui uh, is a Maori language, which means many, big, and large. So from crazy, it went to many, big, large. I guess so. Interesting. <laughs> it's a lot of drink, I guess. <laughs> so you have mentioned before that Tiki is very secretive. Yeah, so we mentioned a lot of times on the show that the recipe, especially you go back to Donna Beachcomber and Trader Vic... That the recipes were very secretive. And actually, Don would label the bottles with letters. So even the bartenders that worked with him didn't even know the recipe. So they couldn't even pass it on. And someone like say, hey, you know what? Come work with me and let's make that drink. And he's like, well, that's great. But I don't know what the drink is. Well, what do you mean by label, though? <laughs> so what he would do is actually he would do is label all the spices like numbers. So one, two, three, and four. And then all the spirits would be actually bottles of a, B, C, or D. So like letters and numbers combined to make the recipes. So what, how do we know the, the recipe and what the label means, though? Yeah, so actually our favorite friend that you love to pronounce every now and then, Jeff the Beach Bomb Barry. Bombardi. Oh, Mr. Bombardi, according <laughs> to you. <laughs> uh, actually, so he did some research and deciphered all the codes. So now we know the recipe now. Well, I'm, I'm sure for the spirits, it's easier than... Than the spices, for sure. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You can break that down. You're a bartender. I'm sure that if, if we put a bunch of cups with just the booze inside, you would probably know. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a talent that I've gained over the years. I can do that with <laughs> Coke and Pepsi. 
It's true. Yeah. Oh, the Coke and Pepsi challenge. Yeah. There we go. That I can do. We'll have I can to try this even sometime. by the smell. I can tell you if it's Pepsi. no way. Did you not? Wow, that's okay, some so potent stuff. Back to the to Beach Bombardi. Yes, Mary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when, <laughs> when and where did he publish the recipe there for us? All right, so the recipe that he, he published for us was in the Sipping Safari, which is in 2007, and then Smuggler's Cove, which is another book that we've referred to in the show before. They actually adapted the recipe in 2016 in their book. Wow. So, wait, this is like really recent. Yeah. So, what I call this actually is what I call the third generation of tiki culture. So, what I mean by that is that the first generation is Donna Beachcomber and Trader Vic for the most part. That was back in the 30s, sorry, the 40s and the 50s. And then in the end of the 50s, it declined and receded, tiki culture in general. Um, a couple of things. Obviously, the Vietnam War is one of the things that happened. It also became kind of uh, tacky. So uh, it changed in the process. But then the second generation started in the late 70s, mid to late 70s, when disco sucked. Uh, still does. But anyways. Uh, no, no, no. I love disco. Come on. Disco, disco. It's time to disco, disco. I like that. Anyways, uh, so then clubs actually became not important anymore. And people actually want, want to go back to sitting down and relaxing and enjoying themselves. And so then Tiki, that's a second generation. So the third generation is obviously in the millennium, the 2000, where Jeff the Beach Bomberry was able to decode all these recipes that nobody knew and publish them. Hmm. Smart him. Okay, yes. so what is in this Nui Nui drink? Okay, so we're going to do the Dawn the Beach Coma recipe first. We always do a couple of recipes. And this is the first one we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And so this recipe is three ounces of Virgin Island rum, and that can be either cruising rum or Pooza's rum, which we've talked about before in the past, uh, which is the, the British Navy rum we talked about in the show before. Yes. And I uh, actually remember you doing it on trivia. You did. <laughs> and I, can't, I actually didn't check to see how well you did on trivia. I did pretty pretty. I think well. you did okay. Yeah. You know, Norma helped you on a few of them there. But yeah, it was, it was pretty and good. And I did some good guessing. You did some good guessing, yeah, because yeah. you know you were just like, okay, well, that sort of sounds like the right but answer. But you know what? The trivia actually made me go back and listen to all every single ah. episode. So I started from... Episode one, and I'm working my way up. Ah, there you go. To where I begin. So, for listeners actually who've never listened to our show before, we actually have an episode which is Tiki Trivia. So, if you want to know some really cool Tiki Trivia facts, listen to that one. And uh, Norma, who does our travel tips, and Paul actually were the guests, and they had a guest on the Tiki Trivia. And it's also, too, is a link on our webpage actually to all the questions we did. Um, but with... a tip here if you go back to the previous episodes before episode 19, which is yes. where I started, Yes. You will learn the the answers, All and then the you answers. won't have to guess stuff That's like right. I did. That's right. All the answers to the cheeky trivia are actually on our episodes. That's very true. Exactly. Right? All right, so let's go back to the, yeah. This is what we, we always, always do cut on the, the show. Recipe. Always. We always sidetrack, and always. then we go back to it. We're terrible. All right, so Don's recipe. We can start again. So three ounces of Virgin uh, Island rum. So that could be cruising rum or uh, Pusa's rum. Uh, we got to do a half ounce of lime juice, half ounce of orange juice. A quarter ounce of vanilla syrup, and actually torn to the Dawn in the Beachcomber recipe, that's spice number two. Ew, that's yeah. fun. A uh, quarter ounce of, of, of ounce of uh, cinnamon syrup, which is spice number four. <laughs> uh, two dashes of bitters, which is dash number eight. <laughs> and a cup of crushed ice. So you're going to do is you're going to blend that for five seconds, and then pour that unstrained into a double old-fashioned glass, and garnish with an orange spiral cut peel with an ice cube as well. And that is the drink. What is a double old-fashioned glass? Okay, so when you hear the word old-fashioned glass in a bar, that's usually the small glass that they will give you if you're doing something like neat or on the rocks. So if you're doing, say, a scotch or a bourbon on the rocks or neat, that's usually the old-fashioned glass they'll give you. It holds about maybe at the most five to six ounces in it. A double old-fashioned glass actually holds between 12 to 16 ounces of fluid. So it's a bigger cup. A bigger rocks glass. Nice. Exactly, yes. So and actually, the ones I got are like crystal, so they're heavy. Ooh, like look you, at you, you all could, fancy oh, yeah. with crystal cups. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we went shopping, I did hilarious because Norma picked up a glass. I'm like, nope, that's not it. She picked up another glass. I'm like, nope, that's not it. And wait, you <laughs> mentioned <laughs> also um, peeled orange. Yes. How, how do you spiral cut peel of orange? So what that is, is that you're going to take a, a regular orange and take your orange peel peeler and you're going to peel around the orange like one full piece from top to bottom. Now, to understand that, we obviously can't visualize it on, on audio. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a link on the website 
and on the recipe, where it'll click you to a YouTube video, instructional video on how to make the orange peel. But basically, once you're done, it's one giant curl peel that goes in the glass from the bottom to the top, and then you fill it with ice, and you fill this up with a drink. And it's a really cool effect, basically, because the orange peel goes from the top to the bottom of the glass. Oh, my God. What are the chances of me not getting this right? Like 100% <laughs> probably? I don't know. So, Mark, have you ever actually done the orange peel uh, spiral thing? Yes, I have cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances of me doing it wrong? <laughs> you could do that. Really? Yeah, you could. Even me? With, with practice. I could see you there. With practice. Yeah, with practice. There you go. Bar. How yeah, many yeah. oranges would I ruin before I do it? Oh. A whole bag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, probably, yeah. <laughs> okay. For those of you that don't know, I'm a little elephant in a china room. Isn't Terrible. it a bowl in a china shop? Yes. Okay. I'm also Brazilian and I don't know the, the same the terminology. That okay, got it. So, yeah. By the way, it's funny because every now and then I'll do some landscape work, whatever, and I knock something over, and Norma's like, oh my God, you're just like a bull in a china shop. Now, just FYI, I did watch a Mythbusters episode where they actually did do it with bulls in a small area with chinas on shelves, like china plates on, plates on shelves. And the bulls went around the shelves and didn't even touch the china. So, bull in the china shop doesn't work busted busted so what am i then no you're the bull in the china shop i guess we'll just have to go with that it's a terminology can i be the giraffe in the china shop sure let's go with that that's probably more likely yeah i think there we go okay you are tall i am there you go (laughs) okay so we talked about the orange spiral and the fact that it goes all the way in the cup and you you're gonna see it and it's gonna look very pretty right exactly yes okay this peel yes You probably want to make it before, right? Because... Right. So this is a time-consuming thing. And if you're doing it for a party and doing a lot of these drinks, you want to make it ahead of time. I actually, if I do uh, have a party, I will make these ahead of time and just put them into a Tupperware container. And then that way I can just pull them out and put them in the glass right away. I love those Tupperware. Yeah, exactly. Tupperware container is a bartender's friend. Right, Mark? Indeed. Oh, my God. We do your garnish. You put it in Tupperware and away you go. There you go. Indeed. Indeed. I had to put an indeed in there. Yes, it's definitely I know, some it's visual like, garnish. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put on Mark's page. I'm going to put Mark, quotation, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Keel. You know what I mean? I like, get this new nickname, indeed. The the beach indeed comer? That's right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I am I'm anxious. I want to hear about... Mark is here today. Making the tiki bar, and Mark is finally back. We missed you, Mark. Oh, I'm, I missed you, all of you. Aww. Aww. You're too cute. You're too cute. You <laughs> are. Look at you. You want to just like, pinch his cheeks, and that's... <laughs> I do, actually. He looks like this big baby. He's too cute. Oh, my God. So, Mark, uh, welcome to the show, by the way, again. Well, it's good to be back. And it's, it's funny because so every time Mark comes, he brings a gift. I don't know if he's doing it, so he makes sure that he gets back on the show again and again. Like, he's just recurring. You don't so, need that, Mark. I know. I think he's got enough wisdom and knowledge that I, he doesn't need to bring anything. But he does anyway. So what did you bring me today? Well, you did your marvelous episode a couple of weeks back on the 151 Swizzle. And the 151 Swizzle is historically done with the Lemonheart 151. And Lemonheart 151 Demerara rum uh, is exceedingly hard to find in the area. Oh, my God, yes. Can I smell it? Oh, God. Absolutely. Am I going to pass out by the smell? Oh, God, no. Okay. (laughs) So, for all you listeners out there, Paul is now opening up the the bottle. I don't know how to open this. Oh, it's it's like opening the vanilla thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ah, it actually go. smells good. Oh, absolutely. How oh, come yeah. it doesn't smell gross like the other spirits that like, <gasps> it burns my nose almost. That's because you think of the, the 151, the Ooh. white rum. So white rum we talked about before goes through a charcoal process and actually wipes out a lot of that stuff. I actually want to like Don't drink it straight. Don't drink it straight. <laughs> well, you, can, you can have a sip. Like it Trust smells me. so good. It's 151. <laughs> any rate, so I pro- you should have a... So now I'm going to have to make I managed a... to uh, bulk up on some 151 a while so ago. So I'm going to have to uh, make him a 151 swizzle now when he comes to the bar. There you go. What do you think? What do you th- I, I thought of having a sip, but Craig looked at me with such a, oh, no. hey, this is a weird look that I was like, oh, hey. no, I'm going to die if I do so, it. You, well, you can't even fly with this stuff anymore. They consider it um, flammable. Expl- flammable explosive material. Oh, yeah. Did he tell you that I brought him an absinthe? Nice. I brought yeah. him an original absinthe from, you, from Prague. Did you bring me anything? Oh, no. Oh. Oh, oh no! Oh no! That's harsh. Oh no! That's really harsh. Oh no! Yeah, so we actually did part one of how to build a tiki bar, and now we're going to do part two, and that's why Mark is here. He is our expert, of course, when it comes to tiki bars, and also what should be in a tiki bar. 
And so on the first episode, if you go back, and if you uh, haven't listened to it, do listen to it prior to this one. We did talk about the bar itself, like how to get that, decorations and backdrops. So today we're going to talk about lighting, music, and equipment. Yeah. So, Mark, let's talk about some basic lighting. And what do you have to offer to that? Well, most of these, uh, if you're doing the big indoor ones, like if you do a Google search on that, you'll see there's a lot of lamps. And so all the lights should be like indirect. There shouldn't be any spot lamps like kitchen lights, this kind of stuff. Everything should be indirect, should be nice soft lighting, putting in like a nice cool mood throughout the whole place. Uh, check out, um, uh, I don't know if we have the link there yet for Oceanic Arts. Uh, they have some amazing lights there. Or you can make your own. Just get some tapa cloth and put it around the outside of a thing. Uh, the ball lights, the uh, puffer fish. Aww. Aww. Aren't they cute? I saw a bunch of them in California and thought of you more. Aww. Aww. It was super it cute. cute. And uh, so, the, yes, indirect lighting. So if you have tiki masks like Craig has here, uh, you put the light behind it so it's coming through the eyes. And that oh, kind of, uh, that's, yeah, exactly. that's a fun idea. Yes. Yeah, I never stuff. thought of that. Or you put them underneath the uh, lip of the bar. So the light is going down, or you put them in, in my case, the our tiki bar has got a transparent top, so I have the lights on the inside, so it glows up. Oh, you're exactly. so smart. Yeah. Right? So a That's couple, a smart idea. Exactly. So a couple of things I want to throw from that. So when we talk about a tiki bar, compared to, say, a regular bar, Paula, is that if you go to a regular bar, the lighting is basically to cover the area, right? Like, it's yeah. not just one specific spot. It's just to illuminate the, re- the region or the area that the bar is in. Yeah. Tiki bars are more specific, exactly. Like, you're highlighting a mask or you're highlighting maybe a passageway to get to the bar. So, it's for accents. It's accents. And oh. it's actually darker than normal. Like, not everything's all lit up. Okay. Exactly. Oh, that's why you bring your little lantern when you go. Exactly, right. yeah. Yeah. No, a very simple way of lighting to actually to bring off Tiki right off the bat. And when you walk in my backyard, the first two things you see is a palm tree and a Tiki torch. Oh, yeah. So that's, as you see a Tiki very... torch, you know you're in Tiki land. And those are very easy. You can get them at Dollarama. You can get them at Giant Tiger. You can get them at Home Depot. The ones on the inside, uh, if you're doing the inside, don't get like actual flame ones. Just get the, the electronic ones and they do a kind of illuminate like a flame, like a regular flame. Uh, if you're outside, you want to do Cetronola because Cetronola gets rid of bugs. Yes. Mosquitoes. Kill two birds you know. with one stone. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. So also the couple of things that you talked about we want to do is uh, you don't want to go white. Like if you try to, if you can, avoid white light. You obviously will have some white lights. Like actually I do have white lights around the outside of my bar. But you want color, right? You want green and red and blue. You want to highlight things, but not light them up like a spotlight. You don't want it to be too bright. Basically, it's going to look like my living room. Yeah, exactly. Or like you said, it's sort of like a, like a nightclub. Yeah. So things are lit up. You can see where things are, but it's not like overpowering. Yeah, Justin, Justin the bought these lamps that change colors. And he talks to Siri and tells Siri what color he wants. So what color did he pick for Apple? Oh, he, he, picks, he picks a bunch. But the day that he actually showed me, I think he was like, hey, Siri... Make the the whole living room pink. I was and like, the oh whole lord, thing pink. Yeah, because I love pink, and then he's like, oh, she's gonna like it, and I hated it. Uh, I was like, honey, oh, for oh, lord's boy, sakes, did that backfire. <laughs> do not do this not anymore. And then he's like, fine, I'm gonna put it all in my in my office. And then what he did was he liked it so much that he put it in the freaking house, whole the like, whole house. All of it, almost. Oh, so we have colorful, a colorful lighting. Nice. We don't use it. We don't even use it. No. Oh, geez. thankfully. Oh God. Let's keep it that way, honey. Exactly. Yeah. If you're listening, Justin, there you go. He's well, always listening. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so another thing you want to actually can do as well, it's very easy, and it's it's especially if you're doing outside there, Mrs. Uh, Paula. I am. Uh, rope light. So <gasps> rope light is very weather resistant. It's very durable. My rope light actually stays out there year round, so it doesn't break or you never have to replace it. It's LEDs, so you never have to replace it. So it's very, and it's also not overpowering. It's just lights up a little area, a little bit, just enough so you can see it, but it's not overpowering. What is rope light? So rope light is like a tube with lights inside it. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly what it is. So let's go on to, let's talk about music. So in music, there's obviously a wide range of things you can pick for music, and obviously everyone has their own preference. We're not going to say that this is the way to go, but we're just going to give you some suggestions on some things to do. Yes. So if you're starting out of you know zero, some basics exactly. Mm-hmm. When you start from zero, this is kind of some things that we kind of throw at you. So one of the ones I could suggest to you is like either Spanish or reggae. So we got the Bob Marley, the Bob Sinclair, the Shaggy, 
the Sean Pauls, the uh, Iglesias. How you? Ooh, ooh, which one? Julio Iglesias or Enrique Iglesias? Enrique. Enrique. I notice every time a girl says his his name, they all smile from ear to ear. That's because he's hot. Oh God. Why wouldn't we On smile? On that note, anyways, uh, yeah. Julio. Julio. Yes. Yeah. Well, when, when he was young. Yeah. True enough. Yeah, yeah. And then his son came along, and he was even hotter. Enrique. Enrique. Yeah. And he knows it too. It's just so funny. He knows it. He does. Oh yeah. Uh, so another thing you could do is a beach scene. So guess what? You got Beach Boys, Elvis, Jimmy Buffett, the Coasters, and Drifters are just some examples of beach scene. Nice. Yep. Those are those are good names right there. Yeah. Uh, a pop theme if you want to do something a little more modern. So you can do uh, Glory Estevan. You can do Mark Anthony, Pitbull, Sean Kingston, Maroon Five. Those kind of categories you could do. Okay, I can work with that. Yep. Mark, uh, a couple suggestions you got for music? Yeah. Well, what being a vinyl hound, I go around. And- Find this stuff as much as I can, usually in thrift stores. Because it's always a thrift store. It is. It's always a thrift store. Or, or the, the church, uh, what's it called? The church Bazaar. Church, yeah. church Bazaar. Oh, my God. Anyway. I don't even know what the church is. Wait, wait. So do, when you walk into a thrift store, do they see like, oh, here Mark it comes again. again. Oh, no. No, you have nothing for you, man. Hide the good stuff. Hide the good stuff. Well, no, the uh, nobody wants the Hawaiian stuff. So, I guess so, hey? They're like, good, we can unload now. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I go to estate sales, and the stuff that I want is stuff that's still there on Sunday. Oh, wow. Yeah, like I got a um, a black velvet uh, Welcome to Hawaii. It's a gorgeous thing. It's easily from the early 70s, late 60s, and I got, yeah. it, for, got it for a buck. It's a it was a buck. Yeah. You know, it's like, so that's what you got to do. At any rate, so I'm a Back vinyl. to the music, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a big vinyl hound, so I collect a lot of the original Exotica, which is uh, traditional music to go with the, uh, the tiki uh, scene. From the 40s, 50s, and early Is it 60s. an inside or outside or either? It's either. Okay. So exotic. So explain, Mark, that some of the instruments you're going to hear in that kind of music. Well, a lot of it you're going to hear is you're going to hear a lot of xylophone, you're going to hear lots of bongos, and you're going to hear lots of bird calls. Bird calls? Bird calls. Yeah, yeah. so in Tiki Dan, bird calls is a common thing in music, yes. Yeah, because uh, the, one of the creators of this, uh, Martin Denny, legend has it, uh, that when he was playing in Hawaii, there was be- beside a pond, and uh, between the songs or during the quiet parts, the frogs or the birds would make noises. Mm-hmm. And the band members started to call back. Yeah. And, and people loved it. And they're like, loved. keep doing it. And so when they came to uh, America to play gigs, they go, well, you don't do the bird calls? Oh, yeah. So it became no. part of their, thi- their signature. It was like Gotta their signature. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for a lot of the stuff that you'll now hear, you'll hear bird calls, monkey, whatever, noises. <laughs> and uh, it's essential. For a lot of the stuff, you just hear it and it just puts a smile on your face. You feel like you're in the jungle. It's more escapism. So there's Martin Denny, Arthur Lyman, and Robert Drazen. Yeah, Drazen. And um, just trying to remember. Plus, I can't read anymore. I'm old. At any rate, uh, Robert's uh, first album, Voodoo, uh, he made a couple more than he passed just as a, he was making a third one. Had a very young John Williams on piano for that album. John Williams went on to do. Star Wars. No way. Indiana Jones, all those. Wow, look at him. Fun fact. So Exotica is pretty amazing. It's very cool. It's very chill. If you have a margarita or a Mai Tai in one hand and a rib in the other, it's fabulous stuff. (laughs) I want to see what this Exotica (laughs) sounds like. There we go. So there's old stuff and then there's new stuff. There's groups from the West Coast and another guy, uh, Stolen Idols from uh, Boston area. There's Mr. Ho's Orchestratica. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Great name. And uh, the Tiki Yaki Orchestra. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's, there you on, go. it's on Spotify. It's called Exotica Essentials. There you go. There you go. These are people doing those noises. You're joking. No, I would never lie to you. There you go. That's fun. <laughs> So, Continue, Mark. Go ahead. So then you can do the traditional Hawaiian stuff. It's nice to mix all that kind of stuff in. It's nice to mix in some surf stuff. Instrumental if you can, just because a lot of the music is instrumental. If you just suddenly hear uh, instrumental or vocals coming in, it'll just break up the, the mood. Yeah, whatever. exactly. I, yeah, I it's agree. true. It's I true. can see that. And um, then the usual uh, lounge stuff. There's some bongo, a little bit of cha-cha. doesn't hurt either. Cha-cha. 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 Fun. We're going to put up some links. Uh, yes, we're going to put some links on for uh, Spotify, Google Play, and iTunes to yeah. some of these playlists that we talked about. And uh, one of them is going to be to this uh, place called Digi Tiki, where it has music like you just played there. Yes. 24-7. 
Oh, wow. Yep. Uh, there's another one uh, we're going to put up there. It's, it's traditional Hawaiian music, mm-hmm. 24-7. With the uh, ukulele? Yeah, ukulele, sing songwriters, that kind of stuff. Okay. And uh, the other one is a very cool one. It's a Spotify list for the playlist for Disney's Trader Sam. Oh, no. Justin's going to want that. Yeah. So <gasps> it's got all kinds of really cool stuff on it. And it's called Disney's Trader Sam's? Well, the link will be there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we'll put it in there for sure. Cool. And, uh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So there's some uh, some music there. To, uh, so the, quite a few suggestions there. And like we said, I mean, everyone obviously has their own preference. So just go with whatever you want. One of the things we did kind of talk about off when we were, before we were recording was that you might also want to do is mix it up a little bit, right, Paula? We talked about that. Yeah. Where it's like if it's all like one theme. Like example, if you did that one, like the music you just played, yeah, you played it for like hours on end. You might want to. Eh, you get a little bored. After change a it up. While, yeah. Right? Change it up a little bit. So you might want to just have. Like, um, on my suggestion example of mine I actually have uh, three or four different tiki playlists and so throughout the night if I'm seeing it's like kind of losing its touch I'll just change on to another one okay yeah yeah so it's a good suggestion as well it is good yeah, very yeah. good so let's talk next about the obvious thing that you need is equipment hmm. so the first thing you need is a blender oh god yeah you love those frozen drinks right that like you do. talked about I so do. you definitely need favorites. a blender so there's different grades of blenders. So the first uh, time we open a tiki bar, the grade that you could start off with is called, it's called the bullet. A bullet is one of those ones you see all the commercials on where you make a protein shake. And it's a very small piece of equipment. doesn't take a lot of room. It starts, it's a good start off kind of point if you're, you know, if you're kind of on a budget for one and you're just starting to make these drinks. But with the bullet, will you be able to make a frozen something? Yeah, because you put the ice in there with it. And it crushes. It crushes the ice. Now, the only thing that I found with the bullet is that a couple of things. One, that the cons are, is that it doesn't crush the ice cubes down completely. So you're still going to get chunks of ice in there. Okay. Uh, and two, that the mechanism eventually through time, the bullet would stop working. Okay. So what It's not an actually... expensive thing. It's like the bullet's about 20 bucks. Okay. So it's not too bad. But what can we actually use to really chop up the, that ice and make it like that slushy flavor? Right. So the next step up from that would be just like a regular kitchen blender. We, you know, you get, everyone's got it at home, right? The kitchen blender. The next step up from that, which is what I got, is the Margaritaville machine. Fun. Cocktail mixing machine. So what it is is that it's kind of like two blenders of one. Huh. So at the top where you put the ice and there's like a little reservoir of ice cubes at the top. Uh, it shaves the ice on the with the first blender down into the the actual uh, container that you put all your mixing stuff into. So basically, it shaves the ice. The first one does, and then once it's dropped into the blender part, like the ca- container part, then it blends it from there. And it actually has a tension span on the uh, the motor, so it knows that oh, it's too thick, so it'll blend more, or it's not thick enough, and it'll add more shaving ice. And blend it to a oh, perfect, a perfect cut. Con- yeah, exactly. So, and also too, on the great thing about this machine is that it can actually make more than one drink. So, example, if you got three or four people on your cheeky bar and you're like, okay, everyone wants a daiquiri, you can make three or four daiquiris in one, one, one shot. Fun. Instead of like blending, mixing, blending, mixing, but bl- you can do it all in one shot. Yeah, and and like this would be an investment. It, I looked it's on Amazon; cheap. it's like 180 dollars, yeah. and then there's more expensive ones. They go up to, uh, well, there's one that actually has three different blenders on yeah. it. So you make three different drinks all at the same time. That's that's 450 though. But it's like $500. Yeah, one was. 450 yeah. So if you're looking about 200 to 250 that's basically what this blender is. It is a worthwhile investment because, A, it's very sturdy. It can handle the workload. Two, you're not going to get it chunks of ice. You can have a really good quality smooth. drink. Smooth drink, exactly. And three... Which I found out the first you had it at my at my bar was that people like love watching it for some strange reason because you push the button, you walk away, make another drink, and the thing blends, and it kind of figures out okay, no, it's not not thick enough, so it drops more ice in there, and then it blends it again, and you're just like, oh, that's cool. I want to see that, and and I want to use it because the drink that I love making is with shaved ice, so I can't. There you go, and it makes it perfect. It makes a perfect drink, and it's not too big. No, eh, it's a little bigger than a regular blender. It's probably like the size of what, Mark, about a coffee machine, I guess. Yeah. Well, the top part is the big part that holds the ice. Yeah. Okay. Um, and oh, there's the tip. Don't put really cold ice in. You what? Got, you got to let it melt just a little tiny bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. But just a bit. Not okay. A lot. So, cause, okay yeah. I was going to say, I've never seen warm ice. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it just can't be that really hard, crusty yeah. ice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. Like not straight from the fridge. Correct. Okay. So yeah. you just put it in there. Just You can put it in like... So what it is great about this machine is that you can put the ice in ahead of time. Uh-huh. 
And if you're worried about like, well, where's it? When ice starts melting, where does it go? On the back side of the machine actually has a reservoir container that holds any melting ice, like water that's being okay. made, being made at oh, the process. Oh, so it doesn't let it go it in. It doesn't leak out anywhere. It just holds it inside the container. Yeah, it like doesn't let it go in the drink. No, it doesn't that's go in the drink cool. at all. Nope, not that's at all. That's really cool. Nope. Yes, the concoction maker is the product I have. Ooh, that's that's the name, Margaritaville <laughs> Concoction, concoction maker. maker. Yeah, yours is green and mine is red. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How but come yours is green? Is it like vintage? It was a different year. Well, mine, for whatever reason, uh, had the bigger reservoir, so I could make twice as many drinks. Uh-huh. Right? And then it came with an extra pitcher. I got to go yeah. to Costco. That's exactly where we got ours. Yeah, yeah, Costco. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So the next thing else you don't want to work on, and not people don't think about, especially if you're buying a, just a basic bar from somewhere like, say, like Home Depot or whatever it is, you're going to need shelf space. You're going to need storage. So if you're having a party, say in your backyard, like I have a party in my backyard, I have to make sure I have everything at that bar I need to make all the drinks I need to make for that party. Instead of going back and forth through the house, to the kitchen, through the basement, maybe to grab some more spirits, this way everything's at the bar. So you need a shelving unit to store all your bottles of spirits, all your bar tools, everything that you need so you can run the party properly. Yeah, that, that is convenient. Exactly. For yeah. sure. Mark, you have yours on the bottom underneath yeah, your bar, I have right? The, uh, the modified traditional outdoor pool bar thing. So I only have uh, the two long shelves and I have windows behind me. So the um, it's kind of hard to put shelves up along there. Yeah. Uh, so I just tend to bring what I need for that evening. I'll have like a specialty drink, like, well, what will be Mai Tais. I'll bring what I need for numerous Mai Tais. And, uh, if so I need to that, place now. there we go. Yeah. Actually, I'm all out of the one rum now. It was a, it was a good weekend for Mai Tais. Ooh. Wait, what? What? He's almost out of rum. No, no, just the one rum. Uh-oh. Ooh. Still. Hello. Well, we can bring the rum. No, you can't get it here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to Florida there in about three weeks, so I'll be bringing okay. some back then. Let me know if I can get it in Dallas. Maybe I can bring it back from Dallas, too. Yeah. Help you out there. Over here, over here. What do you want? I brought you absinthe. I brought him nothing. I brought you absinthe from Prague. Okay. Czech, True Czech enough. Republic. True enough. Okay, I got you. And then I had to hear from Mark, like, what'd you bring me? You didn't bring me a gift. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah, Paula brought, her, brought, brought her nothing. And it was funny, too, because she's like, Mark's going to be here tonight. I'm going to be so excited because I know he's coming. And yeah. then she didn't bring him anything. <laughs> well, I didn't know that he was going to look at me like with a straight face. Well, you never gave eyes. me anything either. Puppy eyes. What'd you give me? You gave me something? Advice. Advice. There we go. <laughs> Constant professionalism. And I there gave you go. friendship. Yes. Oh, there we go. It's a fair exchange. Go. It's yeah. a fair exchange. Okay. Wait a minute. I bring you I guys need... I bring you guys drinks. I Come on need... now. I don't, need... <laughs> I don't need to give token <laughs> gifts like we have to give him. That's true. <laughs> he just smiles if we come with a gift. Yeah. May it be known. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's not. I, true I make. Either. I make drinks. Does that count? Does anything? It's like, it's like. Yeah, for someone that doesn't drink, it's great. Hey, you tried the margarita. You liked it. it I do actually. And the Jungle Bird. You like the Jungle Bird? I too. did too. Like yes. I don't know how I'm going to drive back to Canada, but great. Oh boy, it works. There we go. You're going to have to give me like a little room somewhere to crash. <laughs> exactly, you know? crash. My fiance is going to crash love the that. tiki bar. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> do I fit in there? Oh, uh, we'll try. We'll try. <laughs> All right, so the next thing you're going to want, and we'll give you some options on this, if you're going upscale, is a fridge. So I got one of those little small, like, little pop fridge things from, I think it's Canadian Tire. I think it was like 150 or something around there. Yes, I know I'm upscale. So yeah, you can have a fridge. Now, if you don't have a fridge, in the first year, actually, I didn't have a fridge in my Tiki Bar, what you could do is, and I do suggest this, is to go get a cooler. Now, not just any cooler, but you want to find, find a cooler where you can remove the top. And the reason why I want to say that is because that what you do is you remove the top, you put that in your bar, guess what? Now you have an ice bin for your ice, and you've got a spot to put all your mixers and your orange juice and all of the things. So it's good if the top doesn't, if the top's not there and it comes right off. It's like a three-in-one process. Oh, wow. What about one of those mini fridges from the hotels? Like, isn't that... That's a... what I have. I have one of those little oh, okay. pop mini fridges. It's about 150 around there somewhere. But that's not bad for a fridge. No, no. But I mean, we have to remember, some of our listeners are like, on budgets. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know? Or space. You know what I mean? Like, um, Mark, you don't have a fridge in your place, do you? No, I don't have room. And it's because yeah, it's of room. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, some people don't have the room. So yeah. you have to kind of elaborate. So what do you do for ice? Do you just have a cooler there, I take it then? Yes, I have uh, one cooler for stuff and another, a small cooler for like mixes and another cooler just for ice. 
Ooh. There you go. See, he's done the process. He he has like a private ice place. There you nice. go. Nice. Hmm. So the next topic is glass washer. And you're like, well, Craig, I don't understand what you mean by that. It means that, so you're having a party. Okay, let's, 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 Wait, you don't use your pool? Let's, let's, yeah, no, I'm not using my pool. <laughs> so let's just paint you a picture. Ten people are at your tiki bar. You're having a great time. And everyone wants to try different drinks. So a couple things you got to do here. Well, wait a minute. How do I give them, if I, I keep on getting more and more glasses back to me, that are dirty, right? So how do I clean the glasses? Well, if you don't have a glass washer or you don't can't invest a glass washer, a very thin thing to do is plastic glasses, right? Yeah. You have plastic glasses, you You're throw them away. You're going the environment. I know. And this is why I, I had to change my process. I did start off with plastic glasses. I did change my process. So if you're on a budget, again, plastic glasses do work. Second of all, what you can do is call a, uh, a glass washer. And it's very simple. And I'm actually going to put the link, the information on the page for you guys so you can do it. And really what it is, is you go to Home Depot and they have these five gallon little orange buckets. So I got two of those. And then what I do is I have another bucket that I call the dump bucket. So I basically I take your drink, you got all your ice and your rest of your drink in there. I dump that contents into that bucket. And then in the first bucket, I've got soap and water. But I also too, and I have in that bucket right down the middle of it is a brush. And you can get a bartender's brush that has a suction cup on the bottom of it. On Amazon. On Amazon. So they basically put that in there, suction cup it to the bottom of the bucket. You have the soap and water. So you basically turn the glass upside down. You glass wash it that way. And then the other bucket, you have just regular water. So it's like a rinse. So there you go. You can go all day long. You might have to change the last one, of course, because then the water does get a little, whatever, tainty. But uh, really, you can literally go for a couple hours without actually worrying about glasses. Hmm. That so, is a very good tip. It is very good. Yes, it took me a while to figure that one out because I didn't want to run a hose. I'm like, okay, I don't want to run a hose to the bar. So a couple of things you want to do as well. You want to have what's called a fruit caddy or a garnish caddy. And what that is, if you go to a bar, you'll see the bartender basically has a container where it has all like his sliced oranges and his limes and his lemons and his swords and his cherries. And uh, yeah, so then uh, what do you do for that, Mark, in a pr- beforehand? Like what's the preparation for that? Uh, for me... Uh, I just have, um, I use uh, some of the mugs. I use mugs in small bowls. Ah, there you go. And um, so stuff goes in one, like especially uh, sliced limes, sliced lemons, that kind of stuff that goes in one of drink bowls. Ah, there you go. And so just some on one side, some on another side. And so it, it's festive looking as well as being functional. Mm-hmm. Festive looking. That's, yes. that's a great way of explaining. Well, it's a lot of colors, right? Yeah. You get the greens and the oranges and the yellows and that's reds. That's pretty. And- very pretty. And like, yeah, it's something that you want to do ahead of time. So yeah. you want to slice up your lemons and your limes and your oranges ahead of time. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, also, too, you're going to want some bar tools in there. So your shakers, your strainers, your measuring tools, your juicers, stir sticks, and muddlers. <laughs> uh, one important one that I want to add here, and I actually, through process, I learned the hard way. And so, Zappa, when you guys go to the bar, what's one of the things that you notice around the bartender's service area, like where he's making his drinks? What's laying on the bar? Um, a bar mat. Oh. Right? That, that We've all seen those thing? ones, right? Where it's like it's got Bacardi on it or maybe it's got Smirnoff on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's got some sort of logo on it, right? And it's a plastic rubbery kind of mat. Yeah. Now you're like, well, yeah, it's just there for advertising a liquor. Like, no, it's not. It actually does serve a purpose. So when you're making these drinks... Especially a lot of the tiki drinks, the gla- the liquid goes right to the very top. And Mark, if you want to emphasize, what are the things you actually do on a lot of the tiki drinks to top them off? What do we do? Yeah, you get out your uh, your ice scoop, which is something else you should have. Oh, this, yeah, very good, yeah. And uh, if you top up, you shake, you uh, you do the free pour back into the glass uh, theoretically, and then now you've lost a bunch of ice. You grab more ice, top it up right to the top with crushed exactly, ice. Exactly with crushed ice. So it's going to make a mess, right? Or people start grabbing their drinks, makes a mess. So if you have a nice wood bar like I do, you want to protect that. So the rubber mats actually helps out with that. Oh, that's cool. Yes. And it's like 15 bucks on Amazon. I just <laughs> just looked. <laughs> or what you do is you go to the bar, someone distracts the bartender for a few seconds, and you just grab the bar mat off the bar and then run out the door. Oh, yeah. That, that sure is probably very easy. <laughs> and I'm guessing there's Don't a do it in my bar because I'll be looking that. for you. <laughs> no. I just asked. They gave me one. It's true, because sometimes what they do is actually the, well, to see, actually for the bars, it's free. The, the suppliers actually give those those bar mats. Yeah. And so every now and then we switch them out. So there, sometimes we do. We have a surplus of bar mats that we kind of get rid of. So if someone comes up and goes, oh, I want a bar mat. Well, sure. You got a couple down in the basement. We'll give them to you. That's nice. There you go. Something to ask about. 
So you mentioned crushed ice there, Mark. So what are some things you could do to make crushed ice? Well, I think we've talked about the Lewis bag before, have we not? Yes, I have, because I actually got it at Christmas time, and I'm so happy I did. That's Thank right. You. That's a, mm-hmm. for those out there that are listening, didn't get that episode. Uh, Lewis bag is essentially a nice, thick canvas bag that you put your ice cubes in and take your mallet, or another heavy object that you get angry with, <laughs> and uh, you smash... Somebody's head? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, what kind okay. of show you think this is? Yeah, You're right. joking, people. And you, um, and you smash the ice uh, down to the crush stage. Of course, it's very, very effective when you do that in an open bar and people aren't watching at the time and they turn around, what the heck? And they hear a bang, bang, bang. 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 Yeah. And you go, get back here. Oh, and then they turn around and they see. Now, you have some classic crushed ice pieces of equipment, though, you've mentioned before. Yes, I have. Well, I have an electric one. Uh, it's really nice. It's for like, I make, I can make up a whole bunch of crushed ice ahead of time. Look put, who's being fancy now. And put it in the freezer. Tiki is fancy. Fancy, Mark. Yeah. Frozen crushed ice. <laughs> At, but the other thing, you can just get a hand crusher. And these were very prevalent in the, uh, you used to put them on the walls back in the 50s and the 60s. And it's a hand crank model. Uh, there's all kinds of really gorgeous ones out there. There's, and I was mad as I just mentioned, uh, before we came on, then I picked one up at this church bazaar down in Niagara Falls uh, for two whole dollars. Okay, look I know at that. It's, it's either a dollar or two dollars. Yeah, like nothing's over. <laughs> Never. Yeah. Nothing's Never. over five bucks. This no, is no. the actual dollar. Dollarama. Yeah. Mark is the dollarama. Yeah. If it's over five bucks, it's got to stay. It's come on. Come oh on. God. Yeah, it's too much. That's it. Nope. Yeah. You're too funny. But yeah. if you notice, most of his equipment, it's like five dollars. That's the limit. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's where he stops. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, the ice crushers, it's just a hand crank thing. One way it goes fine crush, one the other way it's a coarse crush. And uh, you can find uh, authentic antique ones uh, for as little as 30 bucks at some good uh, flea market. So vintage. Or Amazon, you probably can do it too, yeah. Nice. Um, actually, I know we're going to have talked about it prior, but you also mentioned, because you're talking about antiques, your blender. What is your blender? Because your blender is different. Not the, not, not the margarita of a machine. Like we yeah. talked about that. The yeah, other a, blender you have. Yeah, I actually have found an old one which I don't use. It's just there for show. Uh, but uh, The milkshake blender. Yeah, it's a milkshake blender. And uh, there's retro models out there that are just all plastic. And they're the beautiful uh, avocado green, that kind of stuff. And you can get, the, I got mine at uh, a secondhand store for seven bucks. Now, what to explain, so what's the difference between that and a regular blend? Because you did kind of explain it to me prior before. Okay, okay. Well, like, well, you know, when you go to a milkshake place, you got, yep. you take your milkshake and your glass. And, and it's like, like <laughs> we call it flash blend, right? Yeah. Yes. So for a lot of the drinks that have uh, crushed ice in them, that's what you use to mix it. And it gives it a nice frothy um, uh, te- uh, texture for the drink. And for a lot of the places, like, uh, for instance, the Shameful Tiki, they have three of those. Ah, Because that's nice. what they mix their drinks with. Right. Wow. They don't use a blender. They use the milkshake machine. Right. Because I guess what it is is that I'm trying to say is that the milkshake blender, or you're trying to explain, is milkshake blender... It doesn't make it into a Slurpee. Like if you blend too much, it becomes almost like a Slurpee. That's right. This way, it's still kind of got some texture to it. It's thick, yes. right? It's not like a Slurpee. Correct. Yeah. So that's kind of a good thing, especially if you look at some of these recipes, like I said, in Tiki, where it talks about flash blending. This is a perfect item to have on your bar. And it looks really cool. It's retro, right? Yeah. So if you actually, if you go on the Tiki uh, Central site there and look at the picture of my bar, you'll see that's on one side and I have the... Uh, the ice crusher on the other side. The ice crusher actually belonged oh, to my go. mother-in-law. And the Aww. old TV. And the old TV and their little yeah. monitor, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so there's some uh, folks, there's some uh, clues and some hints on some suggestions as well for the, uh, so we talked about the lighting, we talked about the music, and we talked about the equipment. So there's some cool stuff all about the Tiki Bars. Mark, it's been awesome. Uh, great. Thank you for coming. And you always are very informative. He's like a walking dictionary sometimes, I swear to God. Yeah, walking, talking, breathing, encyclopedia. I know, it's insane. I'm like, oh my God, man. You know so much information. We, you should launch a Markipedia. A Markipedia? Yeah. Oh. Instead of like Wikipedia, Markipedia. Okay. There we go. So I you just go, go there, you search it out, and it just tells you what the answer is. Yep. <laughs> Am I allowed to make up stuff? No. Well, oh. sure, why not? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You took all the fun out of it. Oh, right? sorry. <laughs> okay. So anyway, folks, that is our show, and uh, I want to thank Mark and Paula for coming in, of course, as usual. They're enjoying their margaritas as we sit here and talk. Do you want to know the truth? What's that? I'm a little tipsy. I'm sure, and you got to drive home. Be very, very careful, please. Like, actually, no, we're not suggesting she does that. In fact, we're going to make sure she just get home safe. 
So this is uh, www.tikicentralcanada.ca, and it's all one word if Cam was here. And by the way, we want to uh, give our condolences to Cam. Um, he will be back to the show soon, and um, just, that's all I want to say. I don't want to get too much in depth. That's He can actually, if he wants to, put the information out about that. But we do miss him for sure, buddy. We miss you. And uh, so anyways, on there, on our episode page, you will see all the episodes we have. You can stream them if you want to live. Uh, recipes. We also have a recipe page for all the recipes we've done. Mark has a page on there. Paula has a page. And by the way, Paula now has a new YouTube page. Tell us about it. We're so excited. Yes. Um, it's not just mine. It's mine and Justin's, my fiance. Aww. And uh, yeah, we and we are very picky eaters, unfortunately. And we travel a lot around. So we decided to just put those things together and help out other picky eaters that want to go to certain places and don't like they're they don't know what they're going to be able to eat or if they're going to find stuff that they can eat. So basically, that's what we try to do. So it's Picky Pear on YouTube. It's Justin and I, and we're waiting for you. There we go. And we'll put the link on your page there for you. Thank you very and, much. And uh, yeah, it's so true because we, when we travel, it's true. You don't know what you're going to be eating. You know what I mean? Like some of these countries, something can be super spicy and you wouldn't know it. Yeah. So you, it's kind of good to know some places to go to if you have allergies or if you're not into, uh, that's just her having a margarita. It's okay. And anyways, uh, yeah, so we're going to put the link on there for you guys. And uh, so I think we're going to go off and make some more margaritas. No. Oh, well, no, no, none for Paula there. None Mark for Paula. And, Mark and Craig. Mark and me will have some more margaritas. And uh, I guess we'll talk to you guys later. Everybody say bye. Bye. Aloha. Aw. Well, I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys. Hey, guys. Where's my drink? Pop, Iglesias, Estefan, Circle, Anthony, Julio, 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 Julio Grisias. Julio Grisias? Julio who? Julio. Grisias. Who's Julio Grisias? He's greasy ass. He's, he's always greasy ass. <laughs>